G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you're having a good day, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user throw ra miss j, titled, Am I the asshole for breaking up my engagement because what my fiancé said about my mum? I, 26 female, am not from the USA, so I might have some grammatical errors. So my dad left my mum and I when I was only 5 years old. I also have a brother, 21 male. He left the country with his mistress and never tried to contact us. We were really poor. My mum had to do some immoral stuff to get the food on the table. She was a stripper and also sometimes pleased men to get money for us. She put my brother and I through school. I understood why my mum did what she did because we had no money and she wanted us to have a life better than ours. And I am not ashamed because of it. I also started working part-time when I was 14. I was a good student, so I got a scholarship to a good university. My mom eventually stopped stripping when my brother got a part-time job too. She now only works as a waitress. I met my fiancé, Javi, 27 male, in college. This was my first serious relationship. We both loved each other. I never told Javi about my mum's past because my mum made me promise to never say that to anyone. I kept that, but it felt so wrong to keep this huge information away from my fiancé. Javi knew about us. He only knew that my family was extremely poor. He doesn't care about that. He is a very sweet guy who always takes care of me. He even covered some of the cost of my brother's education as well, even though I told him not to. My mom also likes him, and that's why she told me not to tell Javi anything about her past or what she did for a living. So a week ago, my mom and I went to Javi's house to meet his parents. I didn't realize his aunt and uncle would also be there. Upon seeing his uncle, my mom's face went white as if she saw a ghost. His uncle also kept staring at my mom as if he knows her. My mom felt uncomfortable and said that she wants to go home. Javi was confused by it, but nonetheless, we left earlier than we anticipated. The next day, my fiancé came to our place and he shouted at me that I lied to him. He said that I'm a gold digger just like my mother, and my mother is the reason why his uncle's first marriage broke. I asked him to explain what the hell he's talking about. He said that his uncle knew my mom because he was a regular customer of her and often hired her for her services. His wife caught them red-handed and immediately filed for divorce. My mum was crying and said that she didn't know he was married. She never asks men about their marital status. I told him that he has no right to speak to my mum like that and his uncle was fully to blame because he was a married man who was hiring escorts for himself. My mum has no obligation towards his marriage. Javi still blamed me and my mum and said that he felt deceived. He said to my face that he doesn't want to date a whore's daughter, because I will probably invite men just like my mum. My mum had to beg him to not break the engagement. I am tired. If I do end up marrying him, my mum always would have to suffer because of it. I don't want that, so I gave him his engagement ring back and told him to never show his face again. My mum is angry because she thinks this is my only chance to get married because no other guy would want to marry into a family where the mum works as a sex worker. But I think I did the right thing because I'm not ashamed of my mum. I didn't even want to hide it in the first place. I wanted to tell him the truth, but my mum refused it. So, am I the asshole? Edit, I need to clear things out a bit. Javi knows everything about my life. He knows my dad fled the country and we had to live in poverty because of it. He knows my mum got pregnant way too young. I did give him hints that my mum had to do shady things to get by. He probably thought that my mum stole things. But I didn't disclose that she was a sex worker. I wanted to tell him, but my mum said not to because she doesn't want things to escalate. Also, I never asked Javi to pay for my brother's education. He did it from the goodwill of his own heart. I did promise to pay him back. I am not after his money. I do love him a lot, and even though we are broken up now, I still miss him. We have been together for six years. It is not easy to throw away those six years just like that. OP, I understand where you're coming from and I understand that it's hard, but how about we do a little exercise where you remove yourself from this situation? Let's say your friend is out here and your friend has a boyfriend who's screaming at him that she's a whore because her mom had to be a sex worker to get by. 
would you say, you know what, he's a generous, nice man and you're in love with him. You should just forgive him for that. I don't think you would, and I don't think any rational person would give them that advice. This man said a bit too much Kool-Aid, I think he's a loser, and I think he needs to get a life. While he is indeed entitled to his own opinions, I think his opinions suck ass. I think this is a morally bankrupt man who doesn't see the circumstances that you guys were in and blames her for his uncle being a complete piece of shit. It is not at all her fault, and it just reveals further layers of bullshit underneath Javi, or whatever this guy's name is, Mask. The mask has well and truly slipped. This guy sucks. He is an asshole. I think you will be perpetuating his assholery if you stay with him. Please leave him, OP, for the sake of all that is good in this world. Not the asshole for now. In the comments, SalamanderHot2799 says... Oh, so you are to be a whore because of your mum. But doesn't that mean he's probably going to use escorts regularly? It runs in his family to be unfaithful, according to his logic. And you just know he'll blame the sex worker for his choice to cheat anyway. OP can do better. It always bothers me when people get mad at the homewrecker. Like, they're the ones who cheated. I mean, if they knew the cheater was married, then they're just as much to blame. But if they didn't, then the responsibility falls solely on the cheater. Eggplant Original says, Not the asshole, but your ex sure is. You dodged a bullet getting rid of him. You will find the right person for you. Give your mum a hug and be happy that you aren't marrying into that awful family. And OP replies, I know that, and I understand why he is upset. Sex work is heavily criticised in my country, to the point even doctors refuse to treat them. I understand his family's stigma, especially since his uncle was caught with my mum, so they have a reason to hate her. I hoped that he would be a little bit understanding about our situation. If my mum didn't start working as a stripper, she would have never been able to send us to school or college. I did love him a lot. His attitude is telling, to be honest. Blaming your mum when it was his uncle who screwed around makes me irrationally annoyed. No, 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 no. Rationally annoyed and rationally infuriated. An entire culture that has men willing to pay for sex and then condemn those who are forced to resort to it. Scum. This is the thing that really irritates me the most. Her mum didn't make any vows or promises to that guy's aunt, only the uncle. Women have been killed for this and worse, and it's time to stop blaming victims of society. And now, on to the update. Hi everyone, I wanted to say thank you so much for your support. I never thought I would get so much support from strangers than people from my own community. I was, however, expecting a lot of hate towards my mum, considering her profession, but it's less than what I expected. I don't know if this qualifies as a proper update, but there have been a few changes. After I broke the engagement, I have been getting calls from my friends and Javi's family that I am making a huge mistake. My close friends know that my mom used to be a sex worker, but mutual friends of mine and Javi do not know about it. So they're also questioning me if I ever did that myself. Javi did apologize. He said he got it carried away by his emotions and that he loves me. Not gonna lie, I love him too. I wanted to get past all of this. I know people have told me that I should not get married to this guy, but I was weak for a moment. Until he told me that he is willing to let things go and start anew if my mum does not attend any wedding functions. I was shocked. Weddings are a big deal in our culture. There are many functions and parties surrounding the wedding. How can he ask me that I do not involve my mum? He told me that because of my mum's past, it would be difficult for his family members to be around her. He convinced his mom with difficulty about this engagement. Also, since his uncle is going to be there, it will only remind him of bad things. At that moment, I realized that I was never a consideration. It was always him and making his family happy. My family is beneath them because we are not from a respectable background and come from homes of sex workers. I stood firm and told him, no, it is not going to happen. I will not give in to their demands because the way I see it, my mom didn't do anything wrong. It's funny how quickly people will judge a woman based on her work, that she had to do to feed her kids, but no one will come forward to help her in her time of need. Javi threatened that I'm making a huge mistake by letting him go, and I just left. I do not have the energy to deal with this. I think this news is spreading like wildfire now. 
I may have to move out of the city because if this news reaches my workplace, I know damn well people will ostracize me, so I might look for a job in a different area. Lastly, I messaged him saying I'm sorry for not telling him earlier about my mum, but I loved him a lot. I am sad that he chose this topic to ruin a six-year-old relationship. I will be going to the bank and paying back the money he paid for his brother's education. I am still crying and jilted to say the least. Also, I saw that my post was shared in different religious groups bashing my mum, saying that I deserved it. Well, let me tell you, religious fanatics, that most men who claim to be religious are not at all. My mum had many clients who claim to be religious, including pastors and preachers. So please, before blaming my mum, look inside your house and your family. You might find chameleons hiding within your family too. Edit, people who are asking me why I'm paying him back, it is because I don't want him to use it as an excuse to call me a gold digger who used him for his money. I don't want to be in his debt. In the comments, Awkward Fortune Cookie says, It's funny how men can chastise women for doing something that they are the ones paying her to do. Yeah, like, why is the uncle, who cheated on his wife with a sex worker, allowed to attend the wedding? He broke his vows. You'd think he is the last person anyone would want to witness their marriage. Well, that's because he is a man. Same thing in my culture. Men cheat all the time and go to sex workers, and women are expected to respect that. That's a hell no from this wife. Mind you, that's not acceptable in my culture. Some religious groups promote being submissive to that point, but it's still a no from me. Zanny54 says, Good, because you can guarantee the exclusion of your mum wouldn't stop with just the wedding. And I wish terrible energy to those religious asshats who would rather you and your mum be homeless and starve to death for the sake of virtue. Not only would the mum keep getting excluded, I would bet money on the fact that he and his family would constantly use it as social leverage over OP, make her feel less than, like she should always be glad for any scraps tossed her way. I guess me personally, I'm still not on board with paying him back the money, but I do guess it stops him from having any avenue to bash you for those gold digger claims. Which any rational person would see, oh, it's unfounded, he's just being a piece of shit. But I don't think that that man is surrounded by rational people. I don't think that in the slightest. Very much a rock and a hard place situation that you're in right now, OP. I wish you all the best. I think you were making the right choice to move on from this. Anyway guys, what did you think of this one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user AshleyK3, titled... Am I the asshole for telling my husband I was going to divorce him for going to his sister's wedding? So this is happening in real time, and I don't know if my emotions are super high right now, or I'm completely in the right. My sister-in-law is getting married, and I've been helping her plan her wedding, from the DJ to the makeup artist to hair, etc. She asked me to be in the wedding party. I agreed to that. My husband agreed to have me read a prayer at the church, even though I'm not very religious, and to sponsor the wedding. I was never asked for that. Comes to today, her first dress fitting. I'm there with my mother-in-law, my sisters-in-law, and her future in-laws. Everyone was looking at bridesmaid dresses, and so was I. I was then, in that moment, told I was not in the wedding party. I was not allowed to be in the wedding photos, and would have to drive myself to the wedding due to my husband being in the groom's party. I was told that I was basically the wedding planner, and would need to leave after the ceremony while the wedding party took photos to make sure the reception was being set up correctly. I walked away and texted my husband that I was upset, but didn't want to ruin his sister's big moment. She picked her dress and they continued to look at bridesmaid dresses. I told my sister-in-law I was leaving and congratulations on the dress. I made it outside and began to cry and called my husband and explained the situation to him. This isn't the first time his family has done this to me in the nine years we've been together. They disrespected me and my marriage so many times. I explained I no longer wanted to attend the wedding and he said okay, but I still am. I told him if he wanted to, that was fine, but it would be the last time he allows his family to make me feel this way. He said I'm being ridiculous, and my family agrees with him. So am I the asshole? I just want to know why your family is agreeing with him. What is going on? 
oh, you're the wedding planner. You're not allowed to be in any photos. You have to leave straight away to go deal with the other stuff. Also, plans changed. You're not a bridesmaid. Screw you. But you're the ridiculous one here, buddy. How are you being gaslit so hard by everyone around you in this situation? Oh my god. I myself would just quit. I'd just be like, you know what? You guys all suck. I'm out of here. You deal with this yourself. I'm not even going to this wedding anymore. I don't think that ruins anything for your husband's sister. She's an asshole. Everyone around her are assholes. They can deal with the consequences of their actions. My vote, not the asshole. In the comments, 5 Foot Philly says, If your husband goes to this wedding, you will end up resenting him. After that, it's just a matter of time. Cut your losses and go find someone who will honor his vows to put you first. Not the asshole. Speech Distinct 8793 says, Nope, and follow through with it if he can't stick up for you. If you're petty, cancel everything you had a part in planning. Any money you spent, return any and everything. OP replies, I said I was going to cancel the hair and makeup, and my husband told me that his sister is already in contact on her own. Kind of feels like they used me for my resources. The fact that he knew that detail means he also knew what his sister was doing and they had planned for it. Okay, forget what I said above. OP should pay a process server to serve her husband with divorce papers at the wedding. Forget waiting for the reception. I love this recommendation, especially since it will take the attention away from the bride and put it on the husband. He gets partial blame and she doesn't have to be there to take the heat. She just needs to make sure to turn her phone off, but don't block anyone. You may need evidence to hand to the lawyer during divorce proceedings to get a better deal. And now, onto the update. So I looked it up to give you the correct answer. Sponsors are the only people you legally need at your wedding. They act as witnesses to your marriage, and they're the ones who will sign your marriage certificate. Of course, aside from the legal aspect, they will also act as godparents to you and your partner. Also, today was the wedding party pre-dinner to get to know one another. I was invited over a month ago with my husband, but I couldn't go today due to it being my mother's birthday. So my husband and I told his sister that I could do the dress fitting, but not the dinner. So I'm confused as to why I needed to be at the dress fitting with all the bridesmaids in the wedding party dinner. She called all week to make sure I still will be at the dress fitting. She was upset, but my mom has lung cancer and she's not doing well, so I wouldn't miss her birthday. My husband texted his sister and told her that we weren't going to come. I'm not sure what she said back, but he was upset the whole dinner for my mum's birthday. The DJ is my brother's best friend, and the makeup artist is my stepsister, so I know I could tell them what's going on, and they cancel. Backstory. On Thanksgiving dinner, my sister-in-law asked me and her sisters, three, to help her plan her wedding, so I wasn't the only person asked to help. I agreed then because I know the stress of planning a wedding alone. I picked out centerpieces and helped with things she didn't know about. Something new, old, etc. And ever since then, I have been helping her with vendors and even picking out her wedding song. I think deep down I'm not upset about not being in the wedding, I just wish I didn't look stupid going to the dress fitting and looking at dresses. Like, I wish she would have just called me on the phone and been like, hey, there's a change of plans, you're no longer in the wedding. It was done in front of my mother-in-law, her future mother-in-law, and the fiancé's sisters. I think everyone saw I took it by surprise when I was told. The bride used her little sister to be the one that told me, because I know she didn't want to look like the bad guy, despite me and my mother-in-law not having the best relationship, she doesn't allow her daughter to walk all over me, but she doesn't speak English, and didn't know what was being said to me. After speaking with my husband when I got home from my mum's birthday, he said his sister asked him two weeks ago to walk her down the aisle due to their father passing away, and him being her only brother, and that if he doesn't attend the wedding, I will be opening the worst can of worms ever. I explained to him that he was supposed to walk with me, and that when I was taken from the wedding, they changed what he was doing. He said he would walk her down the aisle, but not go with them in the limo and not be in any photos. I know he's a huge mama's boy, so I will likely not be married in the upcoming weeks. Also, the petty revenge. I thought about just attending the wedding, and when asked to give my prayer, just mentioning in front of the families how the bride and groom are huge cokeheads. The groom's family is extremely religious, and it would just ruin the wedding. 
but my husband knows how petty I can be, and he thought that I had a master plan. In the comments, tired antisocial mum says, None of this is okay, and it shouldn't matter if your husband is a mama's boy. I married an only child mama's boy who lived with his mum for years as an adult after his parents separated. He still finds ways to value me and his mother at the same time. I really hope that you don't go and pull back on everything that you had a part of. They can figure it out on their own. This one. Love is not a zero-sum game. More for wife doesn't mean less for mum. The love expands and expresses itself differently. No Association says, Wow, I think I would start cancelling everything I had arranged. Time to not be a doormat. I'm so sorry. And now onto the final update. For the last week span, my husband has been trying to make our relationship work. He let me know that he spoke to his sister and she's hired an official coordinator and says she no longer needs my help. She has also fired the DJ and is unsure about the makeup artist. She also told him that she does not know where I got confused and misunderstood the situation of being a bridesmaid. He showed her the messages of her asking me and telling me the bridesmaid dress color to buy. She didn't have anything to say but told him that she never meant for me to be so confused. He told her he will be walking her down the aisle and then leaving the wedding. He told me I ruined his relationship with his family. He said that I am also losing his family in the process and that they will hate me. I told him that for the last nine years, his family has never cared about me. I told him that if he was to die tomorrow, no one in his family would reach out to me after the funeral. He didn't have anything to say after that. I think she knows that it's 100% true. He said he would like to continue with the divorce. I think that's the best decision. I was in a pretty bad car accident. I was hit from behind. The other driver was going about 50 miles per hour. I ended up in the hospital and I called my husband, but he didn't show up. He said he was too busy with work. His sister the bride lives about 5 minutes away from where the car accident was and he asked her to go. But she never showed up. I brought that up to him and he said no one was obligated to go to the hospital until I became conscious. I feel sad that I'm losing such a big part of my life, but I know that I deserve someone who cares about me and will put me first in situations that hurt me. In the comments, Stabinal says, Not the asshole. Wow, I am sad for what you have gone through, but glad to see yourself coming out the other side. You don't need toxicity like that, and if you're in an accident, for the person who is supposed to love you not even bothering to come and see you, words fail me. Red flag. Time to move on and rebuild. Good luck to you as you face the sunshine that you deserve. Bloody hell. His wife was in the hospital and he was too busy with work? No. OP, you are an amazing girl. Leave these trashy people in the dust. There are amazing people in the world who wouldn't treat you this way or take advantage of your kindness. He is spineless and his family sucks. Good on you for standing up for yourself. Bite Me 717 says, Not the asshole, and sign the divorce papers in front of him with a smile on your face. Hell, pop open a bottle of champagne and make a toast to him. Tell him that karma is a bitch to people like him and enjoy it when she comes. And don't share a drop of that bubbly with him or anyone else in his family. Honestly, good riddance to bad trash. That guy sucks and his entire family sucks as well. I don't even know if their behavior is excusable. I don't think there's any universe in which anything they did was okay. Glad that you're out of that mess, OP. Honestly, this divorce is probably for the best as much as it sucks. Sending well wishes your way. Anyway guys, what did you guys think of this one? I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Posted by user Strong Emu, titled, Am I the asshole for banning my sister-in-law from my house over tomato sauce? I, 28 female, have an older brother, 32 male. He is married to sister-in-law, 33 female. I get along with her well, except for this one point. If you don't keep an eye on her, she will get into the kitchen and add seasonings to whatever is cooking. She thinks she's fixing stuff, but not all foods need turmeric in it. This Saturday, I received 40 pounds of tomatoes. It took me the whole weekend to turn it into a sauce that I was planning to can. I can it plain and then add whatever seasonings and herbs it needs, depending on the recipe. 
They came to take a bag of spare clothes for one of their kids, and in the five minutes it took me to get it, she managed to get into the kitchen, add salt, pepper, turmeric, olive oil, garlic powder, and Italian herbs to all five of the pots that were simmering on the stove. And when I asked her what she was doing, she had the audacity to say, this sauce needed some taste, I added it for you. Like I've never told her to not touch what I was cooking before. I was so angry that I knew I couldn't be calm talking with her. So I simply walked to my brother, told him to take the clothes and his wife, and that she is no longer welcome in my house. She had followed me, was shocked, started apologizing, but I just ignored her. I added that he should come by tomorrow to take the sauce his wife ruined, because otherwise it would be thrown away, and that I expected 40 pounds of replacement tomatoes. They left, he came back with the tomatoes, an apology letter from her, and an apology carrot cake, which is my favorite. But I told him that I stand by my decision. Now my parents got involved, and since I'm the one that usually hosts, and since she is not allowed in my house, I told them to make alternate plans for Memorial Day. My husband says that I'm in the right, but my parents say that my reaction is way overblown. So am I the asshole? Edit, since there seems to be some confusion, I am not planning to host for Memorial Day and not invite her, I said I am not hosting. My parents or my brother should host, and I will attend as a guest. I might be angry, but I don't want her excluded. Honestly, this sister-in-law just sounds like a terrible person, and I don't blame you for not wanting to go ahead with hosting the party now. She continually shows you disrespect, and she shows that she doesn't care about disrespecting you and will continue doing it. She will only apologize when faced with consequences, but she won't change her actions. She won't change her intentions. Your approach to this situation isn't overblown. Your parents just don't want to have to deal with her. Sucks to be them, but this isn't your problem. This shouldn't be anyone's problem. She should just be better from the get-go. I'm saying not the asshole. she's the asshole, and your parents are assholes for supporting this and not offering any reasonable solutions or trying to get her to change for the better. In the comments, do I want to know 6417 says, If you don't keep an eye on her, she will get into the kitchen and add seasonings to whatever is cooking. Like, what the hell? This is so boundary disrespecting, disrespectful, and insulting to what you are cooking. And it wasn't even for her. Not the asshole for being furious. I do think she's learned her lesson though. And OP replies, She thinks we don't season enough, but here's the thing. If I'm making Indian or Chinese, I toast the spices and grind them with a mortar and pestle. My Ethiopian friend says that I make spicier food than her mom. But if I'm making mac and cheese, a burger or mashed potatoes, of course I'm only using salt and pepper, because usually the flavors are in the sauce or gravy. Even if you didn't season at all, her behavior is completely wild. Who seasons food they're not only not cooking, but not even eating? Who cares if your tomato sauce is totally bland? You already have good advice, but I'm so fascinated by the pathology of this. What the hell is going through her head? Is it an impulse issue? Does she just think that she's a better cook than everyone else? Bizarre. My thoughts exactly. I have a relative that just doesn't season her food, and we all accept it. I'm just going to offer to make the scalloped potatoes next Christmas. Successful Duck says, So not the asshole. She's crossing boundaries, poking into something where she doesn't belong. There is all kinds of wrong with messing with someone else's cooking. What if you were making something for someone allergic to turmeric? Good on your brother for replacing the tomatoes, and on her for apologizing. That said, you are still in the right for banning her from the house, especially if that has happened multiple times, and you have been clear with her that it's not acceptable. If you're thinking about letting her back in, I'd make sure the apology is a real apology first. Not, I'm sorry if your feelings were hurt, but something which takes the responsibility for her actions. I added seasoning to your giant tomato sauce project without asking. This was out of line, and I shouldn't have done it. It's my fault, and I'm sorry. In the future, I'm planning to not enter your kitchen unless invited. Not the asshole. Garlic is alkaline. That would entirely change the processing times to safely can the tomato sauce. She has no idea what she is messing with. The safety of your preserves for the next year. You're entitled to hold to your boundary even after her apology. A cake is a nice gesture, but by no means is it enough to buy your trust back. 
And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.